Message Analyzer shows a simplified view of traffic by default. It automatically reassembles fragments that can cause noise, letting you drill down from the top. Let's discuss these differences, how this can be an advantage, and how the simplified view affects filtering in the UI. A major difficulty, especially with network traffic, is noise. With hundreds of different conversations occurring, even from just one machine, there can be lots of irrelevant traffic. As data appears on the wire, it's not well organized for you by default. And related messages can be adjacent, but more likely intermixed with other conversations and network traffic. One reason there is noise, not the only one, mind you, is packet fragmentation. The most common type of fragmentation occurs at the TCP layer. Network pipes can be small, meaning that you can only send a small chunk of data at a time, around 1,500 bytes for Ethernet. One of TCP's main job is to fragment large chunk of data, like a website photo, and send each fragment to the same destination, where the TCP stack on the other side assembles it back together. Each of these fragments represent a network packet, which we generically call a message. Now, imagine you download an image from a website that is 150,000 bytes. At the very least, that means 100 fragments to send the image, which equates to a lot of noise, especially if you're interested in only the application level perspective. Another similar reason for noise is that an operation, for instance, downloading an image from a website, is split into a request and a response. In many cases, you care about the atomic operation and not the interaction of the request and the response. Message Analyzer is configured by default to group all of these messages together in a tree structure, with the atomic operation at the top, followed by a request response layer, which is followed by the lower layers of the network stack, which can be fragmented by TCP and other protocols. This coalescing of frames has some advantages because it's easier to understand the big picture. Here, you can see three operations represented by the blue cube icons. When you flatten the list using the flatten message list button, you get a view more like network monitor. But this can be distracting when trying to understand the overall issue. If you have a performance issue, you can quickly determine if the network or web service is slow by using the time elapsed or the response time columns. Since we group requests and responses, you can sort on the slowest responses and then drill down to see why it's slow. Also realize that each row in the grid also represents the tree of messages that is visually represented in the message stack view. You can see this in the analysis grid by expanding the tree structure there. The request and response map to the request and response in the message stack view. And the same goes for the rest. For instance, the TCP fragments in the response analysis grid map to this section in the message stack. Since there are so many, we can't show you a summary. However, hovering over a message will provide a tooltip, and clicking on that box brings the message up in the details window and shows you the specifics there. This tree structure poses a problem with filtering, which is one of your primary tools for getting rid of noise. Filtering, as you may or may not know, uses an expression to display messages that match. For instance, you can filter to show only HTTP messages or traffic matching a specific TCP port. When you apply the filter, the results return all the network frames and messages that match that expression. But what happens since each line is compressed and represents a tree? How do you filter a tree? The way we handle this with Message Analyzer is that when you apply a filter, the expression matches when any of the nodes of the tree match. An advantage is that you get a huge performance boost because you don't have to query every fragment. If we search for port 49198, 
we only have to search three messages before we find a hit. And since we've already grouped these messages together, we find the other related fragments automatically. Many filters work like you expect. And filtering from the top of the tree works well when you're looking for bi-directional traffic or filtering out a specific protocol like HTTP. But the problem occurs when you need to filter out a single fragment or fragments from this tree view. So now imagine what happens when we apply a filter and look for only HTTP requests. Since the request is paired with the response in the tree, we return all the responses as well. However, maybe you only wanted to see the request or create a filter to focus on a specific TCP sequence number. The tools we use to solve that problem are called viewpoints and viewpoint filters. For more information about that, keep tuned for the next video where we'll discuss filtering using viewpoints. Bye for now. Thank you.